Forbidden Origins, Episode 1. Who are we? We look up at the moonless sky on a cool winter's night in awe and witness the angelic starscape spanning across the horizon. We ask ourselves a question, just as our ancestors once did. It's a question that touches so deep, it reaches into our very core, influencing our thoughts and decisions in life. The question that's been asked countless times by countless humans over the epochs of time. The question is as simple as this. Who are we? Followed by the inevitable secondary question. Where did we come from? Hi, I'm Dominician Arjunari, and I invite you to join me as we look into the obscured origins and fate of the human race in this first episode of Forbidden Origins. As a devoted fiction author, I set out on a path of discovery, desperately trying to understand the origins of man in order to write the greatest science fiction fantasy story I possibly could. But the more I search for answers about who we are and where we come from, the more things just didn't add up. Who are we? And where did we come from? Well, that's at least how almost every single BBC space documentary over the last 30 years has started. I know, there's such cliched questions to ask, but these two questions are unimaginably powerful, and how we answer these questions forms the foundations of every single choice and decision we'll ever make in our lives. As an avid author and researcher, I watched nearly every mainstream space and science documentary I could get my hands on over the last 30 years. From Cosmos, a space-time odyssey, through the wormhole, the planets, space, how the universe works, Hubble, roving Mars, mission to Mir. I read books by Carl Sagan, Stephen Hawking, Marcus Schoen, Dr. Robert Zubrin. I also delved into natural history, reading the hallmark standard taught in every institution around the world. Charles Darwin's The Origin of Species. And the other prominent book of its time, H.G. Wells, A Short History of the World. Listening to the narratives of modern day scientists like Neil deGrasse Tyson, Lawrence Krauss, Richard Dawkins, Stephen Hawking, Dr. Robert Zubrin, Alan Guth, along with people like Egyptologists Zahi Hawass and Salima Ikram, I felt the dots weren't connecting. It seemed like there were too many holes in their theories. It sounded like their narratives just didn't hold up. I for one know as an author, your narrative has to flow. It needs to be cohesive, or else your story and your communication would utterly fail. I don't doubt the technical abilities of these scientists, and I concurred with their presentations. Well, for a time. But that all began to change. At first, it was hard for me to accept the mainstream scientists could not see there were some serious issues with the current state of their framework. Maybe it's because I'm looking at this question from more of a creative perspective. Maybe it was just the sci-fi fantasy author in me wanting to break free, putting my imagination and world-building skills to good use. But that's not until I began to meet others who had arrived at similar conclusions. I discovered the works of John Anthony West, Graham Hancock, Dr. Robert Schock, Eric Von Däniken, Robert Bouval, and Michael Cremo. What these fringe authors and scientists had presented was a truly remarkable alternative to the close-ended mainstream science narrative. It didn't matter whether they were right or wrong, what mattered were the questions they would bring into the table, the other points of interest they had revealed. But I wasn't going to take their word verbatim. No. That's not how proper research is done. So I did what any good author would do. I researched. I began unpacking the greatest fiction story ever told concerning the forbidden origins of man. But how would I know what's true or false? I mean, where would my stable datum come from? Well, I'm grateful to have previously learned how to qualify and filter evidence from two retired FBI agents. And I learned how to evaluate my discoveries with discernment. In order to move forward with my investigations, I needed to venture backwards into our past. So I started with the greatest perceived opposition of science, religion. 
But before we open up that can of worms, let's start from the beginning to give you a rundown on what we know so far, according to modern day science. According to space.com, our known universe is approximately 13.8 billion years old. It's theorized that a titanic explosion called the Big Bang expanded the universe in every direction. Scientists more or less came to this 13.8 billion year figure by studying the oldest objects in the universe and by measuring how it's expanding. Flying through space in an outer arm of the Milky Way galaxy is our solar system and it's theorized to be roughly 4.5 billion years old. But how did we get here? Well, the theory known as panspermia is the hypothesis that life exists throughout the universe. Distributed by space dust, meteoroids, comets, planetoids, asteroids, and possibly by spacecraft, carrying unintended contamination by microorganisms. According to Wikipedia, Quote, the earliest time that life forms first appeared on Earth is at least 3.77 billion years ago, possibly as early as 4.28 billion years. The earliest direct evidence of life on Earth are microfossils of microorganisms permineralized in 3.46 billion year old Australian apex chert rocks. End quote. See, life was made in Australia. According to Darwinian theory, these life forms evolved and adapted as they began to leave the oceans for the land. But around 200,000 years ago, something really bizarre ended up happening. Us, modern anatomical humans. It seems we appeared without warning, and we did things that would vastly separate us from lower level primates Charles Darwin believed we evolved from. Let me tell you why I think it's bizarre. The archetype crushing book, The Origin of Species, written by Charles Darwin over 150 years ago, proposed a scientific explanation of how complex life morphed over the epochs of time, from primitive cells into the complex life forms we see today. Darwin believed his observations of specific life forms in some areas of the world he traveled applied to all life, including humans. You can read more about Charles Darwin at the National Geographic website, in which I've inserted a link in the description. Let's have a look at the definition of the word theory. Theory, a supposition or a system of ideas intended to explain something, especially one based on general principles independent of the thing to be explained. Darwin's theory of evolution. I swear I didn't make that last part up. It actually references Darwin's theory of evolution. Nothing can stop the truth from surfacing, as recent discoveries are revealing facts that challenge long-standing scientific beliefs, especially when it comes to human evolution. Here's what I discovered. The current human evolutionary tree. You know, the one found at your local museum, connecting each fossil all the way up leading to the modern humans at the top of the tree. Well, this is actually not based on any evidence. Such relationships are believed to exist. However, they are yet to be proven. More accurately, they can be considered speculative. Approximately 200,000 years ago, modern humans arose with advanced features, signaling them out from all other known forms of developed life. Ancient Neanderthals were proposed to be some of the ancestors of early humans, whose DNA is similar to ours, yet lack other common DNA. This implies we didn't originally descend from Neanderthals, even if we interbred with them at some point in time. Please see the link in the description to learn more about Neanderthals. With developed genome analysis, it was shown that the DNA that sets us apart from other primates is a result of an ancient, mystifying and explicit fusion of genes, suggesting forces beyond the parameters of evolution made this all possible. There is no evidence suggesting these advanced features develop slowly over long periods of time as Darwin's theory suggests. Unique characteristics like a larger brain, an advanced voice box, an elaborate nervous system, elevated emotional and sensory abilities completely outperform that of our nearest primate relatives. The remarkable thing is, these fine-tuned attributes already existed in modern humans when they appeared 200,000 years ago. And humans haven't changed anatomically up to this very day. 
What makes us unique amidst all the other life forms on this planet? Well, the smoking gun lies in one of our chromosomes. Definition of chromosome. A thread-like structure of nucleic acids and protein found in the nucleus of most living cells, carrying genetic information in the form of genes. A fascinating discovery was presented in the Genome Research Journal in regards to the fusion of chromosome 2, which under further inspection seems to have been edited. It seems as if it had been cut and pasted using some type of futuristic software. Is this some random chance of evolution? Or is it the result of some type of ancient design? Either way, it's controversial. I've provided a link to this chromosome 2 research in the description. Just so you know, these facts are not from some Facebook page or random website. All these facts are based on peer-reviewed science journals within the established scientific community. Don't take my word for it. This is all just the tip of the iceberg. You'll be dumbfounded at what other important facts surround our true origins. These recent discoveries do not support the conventional narrative of the past that we've been taught. The story that's permeated the classrooms and textbooks today forces us to believe we're the result of some insignificant bonding of chemicals and elements in some random dance around the sun, moving down to the savage 200,000 years of competition and survival of the fittest, only to arrive at this point that we're powerless victims in a dog-eat-dog -dog world of competition, conflict and separation. I wish to make something very, very clear. I don't completely discount Charles Darwin's evolution theory. There are many workable ideas, especially when it comes to birds, tigers, insects, and even primates. But remember, it's the theory of evolution. It's a theory, not an absolution. Darwin himself had concerns with his own theory. Just refer to chapter 6 of The Origin of Species and see what Darwin himself has to say about his own theory. Many in academia conveniently brush over that fact. According to Michael Cremo, our existence goes back even further than 200,000 years. He suggests our origins delve back hundreds of millions of years ago. In his book, The Hidden History of the Human Race, he delineates the archaeological findings of bones and fossils that are completely out of place in Earth's historical timeline, with multiple forms of dating methods used by modern day scientists human bones and artifacts that were supposed to be placed inside the timeline of 200,000 years are showing up inside prehistoric rock strata over 100 million years ago. How on earth is that even possible? Well, if you thought that was a wayward anomaly, think again. These out of place artifacts are showing up everywhere in the geological timeline. If you've got a spare hour to kill, just type in out of place artifacts into your search engine to see how incongruent this really is. With these new discoveries comes a radical and daring new story. Don't you think it's time for a new story? Of course I'd say that. I'm a sci-fi fantasy author. But I believe that question is already being answered by the existing evidence solving the mysteries and origins of the past. To accept this new story, we must first think differently about who we are. This is the whole reason why I've created this series. An open invitation to allow the new discoveries to lead to a new story instead of forcing them inside the predetermined structures of the establishment sciences. As we stand amidst the greatest technological advancements of our modern world, science still fails to answer the two most fundamental questions of our existence. Who are we? And where did we come from? To help you unpack the greatest fiction story known to humankind, please refer to the links I've attached in the description section of this video and begin your journey into the new story that is unfolding before our eyes. The information I've just presented you is a mere glimpse of the enormity of the questions, who are we and where did we come from? And I'd like to revisit this topic in a future episode. Until then, I advise all of you watching right now to use your own discernment and discover your own reality on this subject, because that is what true science should be. Discovery, humility, 
and revealing the truth, even if it means opening up to different possibilities. Right now is our moment to rise up and reclaim the origins of our humanity. Like a conductor directs his orchestra, our lives are being directed by the stories we're being told. Used with integrity, stories can aid us in understanding who we are and where we're headed. Stories that are weaponized can lead to a dark and devastating future. The most dangerous story we've been told sounds something a little like this. We're evolved animals without a soul. We need to compete against each other to survive. We're a burden upon this planet, a plague, a virus destined to fail. We're not animals, even though we share their genetics. The last time I checked, my little pug, Captain Wee Wee, can't write a symphony. No more than a proboscis monkey can do your quarterly taxes. So once again, we're not animals, even though science has convinced us we are. We're not a burden upon planet Earth, even though we've been held back from progress. And we're not a viral plague, even though we've been told we are. You are powerful, you are infinite. You are more than an amalgamation of chemicals and elements. Never forget that. Thank you for watching this first episode in the series. I hope this information ignites a fire within you to further explore. Don't forget to utilize the links in the description just so you have something more to research in this compelling subject. I've got no doubt you'll love the next episode in the Forbidden Origin series. Subscribe to my channel, smash the notifications bell, and let me know what other topics you'd like to know about in the comment section. Stay tuned for the next episode in this series as we continue to unpack the greatest fiction story ever told. And together, let us ignite the truth.